A very good evening aspirants, I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Today I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 27th of July 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we will be discussing today. At the end of the video we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So try to watch the entire video and a kind request to you all those who haven't yet subscribed our YouTube channel do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular notifications about our current affairs videos. Now let us get into our first news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. The news is that yesterday the Lok Sabha speaker Mr. Om Birla accepted a no confidence motion filed against Narendra Modi government by Azam Congress MP Gaurav Gogai. The Lok Sabha speaker said that the motion will be discussed within 10 days. See, this is the 28th no confidence motion in history of independent India. And note that the first ever no confidence motion was moved in 1963. And this is all about the news. Now in this discussion, we will see about no confidence motion, then how it is passed and finally we will see about what are the implications of no confidence motion. First of all, what is a no confidence motion? See, a government needs majority support in the Lok Sabha to function. According to Article 75 of the Indian Constitution, the Council of Ministers shall be collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. So, the political party can remain in power until it proves the majority in Lok Sabha. See, to prove the majority, a floor test is taken in the Lok Sabha. The floor test would help us to know whether the executive enjoys the confidence of legislature or not. Okay? Now, who can move a no confidence motion? See, if any member of the House feels that the government in power does not have a majority, then he or she can move a no confidence motion. If the motion is accepted, then the party in power has to prove its majority in the house. And note that the member need not give a reason for moving the no confidence motion. See the no confidence motion cannot be moved in the Rajya Sabha. Since the council of ministers are responsible only to the Lok Sabha, no confidence motion can be moved only in the Lok Sabha. And note that the no confidence motion can be moved by any member of the Lok Sabha if he has support of 50 members from his house and it can be moved against the entire council of ministers only. And note here, the first no confidence motion against the Modi government was moved in 2018. Okay. Now coming to the procedure for no confidence motion, see the rule 198 of the rules of procedure and Conduct of Lok Sabha specifies the procedure for moving a no confidence motion. According to the rules of procedure, the member has to give a written notice of the motion which will be read out by the speaker in the house. A note that a minimum of 50 members have to accept the motion and accordingly the speaker will announce the date for discussion for the motion. See the allotted date has to be within 10 days from the day when the motion is accepted. Otherwise, the motion fails and the member who moved the motion will be informed about the failure. Okay. Now, what is the implication of the no confidence motion? See, if the no confidence motion is passed in the Lok Sabha, the council of ministers must resign from the office. In other words, the Lok Sabha can remove the ministry from office by passing a no confidence motion. See, conventionally, the Attorney General of India resigns when the council of ministers resigns or is replaced. This is because of the fact that the Attorney General is appointed on the advice of Council of Ministers with Prime Minister as head. But it is not as per the Constitution. As per the Constitution, the Attorney General holds office during the pleasure of the President. This means that the Attorney General can be removed by the President at any time. Okay. To sum it up, a no confidence motion can be moved in the Lok Sabha only. And it can be moved by any member of the Lok Sabha if he has support of 50 members from the Lok Sabha and it can be moved against the entire council of ministers. Okay. And if the no confidence motion passed in the Lok Sabha, the council of ministers must resign from the office. Okay. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about no confidence motion in detail. This will be very helpful for your prelims exam. So make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this editorial article. This article tries to highlight the significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, that is the SEO. It talks about the role 
that SEO can play in ensuring a multilateral global order. Now in this context, in our discussion today, we will first cover the basics about Shanghai Cooperation Organization and then we will see the significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now before getting into discussion, I have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion. You can pause the video and go through it. Now let us start with Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The SEO is a permanent intergovernmental international organization. It came into force on 19th September 2003. Before the SEO came into existence, there was the Shanghai Five mechanism. Okay. Now let us see the goals of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Firstly, SEO works to strengthen mutual trust and neighborliness among the member states. Secondly, the SEO aims to promote effective coordination in politics, trade, economy, research, technology, culture and so on. Thirdly, the SEO aims to make joint efforts to maintain and ensure peace, security and stability in the region. And finally, the SEO move towards the establishment of a democratic, fair and rational new international political and economic order. Okay, these are the main goals of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now let us see the composition of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The SEO comprises nine member states. Who are they? They are China, India, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Pakistan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Okay. See, India and Pakistan became permanent members only in 2017. Also note that Iran became the newest member of Shanghai Cooperation Organization and joined at the virtual summit held by India on July 4. And note that Afghanistan, Belarus and Mongolia are the observer states in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Okay. Now let us see about the structure of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. See, the heads of state council is the supreme decision making body of the SEO. It meets once a year and adopts decision in important matters. Note that this year's heads of state council meeting was hosted by India and India conducted the meeting virtually. Okay. Then there is another body called SEO heads of government council. This council also meets once a year. This is to discuss the organization's multilateral cooperation strategy and priority areas to resolve current important economic and other cooperation issues. This body only approves the organization's annual budget. Okay. Apart from these two councils, the organization also has two permanent bodies. One is the SEO Secretariat based in Beijing and the second one is Executive Committee of the Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure that is the RATS which is based in Tashkent. Okay. These are the basic information about Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now moving on to see about the significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The first significance is regional cooperation. See the world right now is grappling with various geopolitical tensions. To reduce these geopolitical tensions, the world needs more cooperation and not confrontation. Here comes Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization fosters cooperation and communication between its member countries in the areas of security, economy, trade, culture and more. For example, let us take the issue of cross-border drug trafficking in the SEO member nations originating from Central Asia. See, to resolve an issue like this, cooperation among various countries required. The SEO has provided a platform for member states to cooperate on these kinds of issues. And this has helped to reduce the threat of drug trafficking in the region. Then the second significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization is regard to counter-terrorism and security. While covering the basis, I mentioned about the regional anti-terrorist structure that is the RATS right. See the main goal of SEO RATS is to facilitate cooperation between SEO member states in the fight against terrorism, separatism and extremism. Overall, the SEO RATS helps to fight against terrorism by coordinating with each other. See, SEO RATS has a number of functions including sharing information and intelligence, then training and capacity building, then coordinating law enforcement operations and developing legal and policy frameworks among the SEO member nations. Through this, the SEO RATS has been playing a significant role in reducing the threat of terrorism in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization region. Okay. Then the third significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization is economic development. 
See, due to a volatile geopolitical scenario, certain countries have started weaponizing trade. There is a rise in instance of protectionism, unilateral sanctions and decoupling of trade. In such volatile scenario, the SEO has been a calming presence. The SEO promotes economic cooperation and trade among its member nations. It seeks to enhance connectivity, then facilitate cross-border trade and it encourages investments to boost economic growth and prosperity in the region. In addition to this, there is potential for more cooperation between nations. For example, the editorial mentions two things. One is settling trade using local currency to reduce dollar dependence and the next one is establishment of SEO Development Bank to aid the growth of member nations. Okay. Overall, the SEO promotes economic development among the member nations. Then the fourth significance is that SEO aids in cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization supports cultural and educational exchanges between member countries. This is by promoting mutual understanding and respect for each other's tradition and values. For example, in April 2023, the SEO countries culture ministers held their 20th meeting online. In this meeting, the ministers spoke about the importance of cultural exchange for promoting inter-civilizational dialogue among the SEO nations. Apart from this, the ministers also emphasized the importance of preserving tangible and intangible cultural heritage of the SEO member states. In addition to this, Varanasi was declared as the first tourism and cultural capital of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Okay, this is all about the significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization in cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. And the last important significance is the role played by Shanghai Cooperation Organization in diplomacy and conflict resolution. The SEO provides a platform for member countries to engage in diplomatic dialogues and to resolve disputes peacefully through negotiations. For example, in 2020, when there was a conflict along the line of actual control between India and China, there was a SEO meeting in Moscow. The meeting provided an avenue for officials from India and China to discuss conflict resolution. Following the meeting, both countries issued a joint statement stating that both sides shall abide by the existing agreements and protocol on bilateral boundary affairs and they will also maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas and avoid any action that could escalate matters. Like this, there are many examples of Shanghai Cooperation Organization that plays the arena for diplomacy and conflict resolution. Okay. And these are some of the significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we revised the basics about Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And we will also discuss in detail about the significance of Shanghai Cooperation Organization with some examples. See, this topic is very much important for your both prelims and mains. So make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. Yesterday was the International Day for the Conservation of Mangrove Ecosystem. So to celebrate the occasion, West Bengal, which is home to about 40% of mangrove forests in India, have announced the setting up of a mangrove cell in the West Bengal state. The mangrove cell will generate funds from private and international sectors. Apart from this, it will bring continuity to the efforts of state government in the mangrove management. The mangrove cell has an action plan for the plantation of mangroves. The cell will also look at maintenance and it will also coordinate with non-governmental organizations. Okay, this is all about the news article given here. Now in this context, let us quickly go through some points about mangroves, their distribution, its importance and threats. Now before getting into discussion, the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here. You can go through it. Now let us start with some basics about mangroves. Mangroves cannot withstand freezing temperatures. So they mainly occur in tropical and subtropical regions of world. That is between latitude 24 degree north and 38 degree south. Within the tropical and subtropical region, the mangroves mainly occur in intertidal zones. Here intertidal zone is the area where the ocean meets the land between high and low tides. See these intertidal zones are marsh in condition. The other conditions in the intertidal zone include lack of oxygen, high salinity and diurnal tidal inundation. 
see these conditions are not ideal for normal plants to grow but the mangroves thrive in such conditions how this is because the mangroves exhibit various morphological and physiological evolutionary adaptations to survive in harsh conditions for example as i already said the mangroves are salt tolerant plant communities that is they are halophytes apart from this the mangrove trees can grow to a height of about 8 to 20 meters height and they also have thick leaves apart from this the mangroves have blind roots which are called nematophores these roots help mangrove trees to respire in anaerobic soils apart from this the seeds of mangrove trees germinate in the trees itself before falling onto the ground and this is called vp parry mode of reproduction because of all these factors the mangroves can able to thrive in harsh conditions in the intertidal zones okay now moving on to see about the importance of mangroves see mangroves are known for their impenetrable maze of woody vegetation that is the mangroves usually grown close to each other because of this fact the mangroves help to cushion the blow of cyclones see during cyclone times the mangrove help to reduce the speed of wind by acting as a cushion then the mangroves have connected root system and this helps in controlling coastal erosion then mangroves provide habitat for a large number of birds fish invertebrates mammals and plants by doing this they help in conserving biodiversity most importantly the mangroves play a major role in combating climate change according to the state of mangroves 2022 report the mangroves hold up to four times the amount of carbon as some other ecosystems of similar size that is the mangroves capture four times the amount of carbon as compared with some other ecosystems of similar size so these are the significance of mangroves see four major factors appear to limit the distribution of mangroves which includes climate salt water tidal fluctuation and soil type okay now coming to the distribution india has about 4992 square kilometer of mangroves according to the indian state of forest report 2021 mangroves in india are distributed across nine states and three union territories and note that west bengal has the highest mangrove cover in india now look at the table here this table is taken from the india state of forest report and this shows the distribution of mangroves in india as you can see from this table compared to 2019 survey there has been increase of 17 square kilometer of mangrove cover in india this is past year news but still the mangroves are facing various threats now let us see the threats one by one the first threat is reclamation of mangrove land for agriculture see most of the mangrove land are diverted for agriculture so this is the major threat and the second threat is the presence of aquaculture or fisheries in the coastal areas see these factors obstruct the tidal flow and the flow of sediments into the mangrove land and thirdly the mangroves are cut down for timber fodder and fuel wood this also threatens the mangrove ecosystem and the last major threat is the increase in industrial activities along the coast and the discharge of untreated waste in mangrove areas these factors also limit the growth of mangroves okay these are the major threats faced by mangrove ecosystem see to address these threats and to increase the mangrove cover our government has taken many steps let us go through the steps one by one the recent one is the mangrove initiative for shoreline habitats and tangible incomes which is in short called mishti scheme under this scheme mangrove plantations will be taken up in coastal areas and in salt pans the plantation drive will be carried out through a convergence between mg narega scheme and the camp of fund see once implemented this scheme will help to increase the mangrove cover forest in india then the second step is dedicated central sector scheme called the national coastal mission program on conservation and management of mangroves and coral reefs under this program annual management action plan for conservation and management of mangroves are formulated and implemented in all the coastal states and union territories apart from these schemes various regulatory measures are implemented through various acts and rules it include coastal regulation zone notification 2019 under the environment protection act 1986 then the wildlife protection act 1972 the indian forest act 1927 the biological diversity act 2002 and note that 
rules under these acts are amended from time to time and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion is all about mangroves then about the distribution of mangroves then we moved on to see about the importance of mangroves then we saw about the threats faced by the mangroves and finally we saw some points about the steps taken by the government to eliminate the threats and to increase the mangrove cover in our country now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article the news is that bengaluru city has become the first indian city to be part of the world cities culture forum that is wccf and this is all about the news in this discussion we will see some points about world cities culture forum see the world cities culture forum which is in short called as wccf is a global network of cities it was founded in 2012 by justin simons who was the london's deputy mayor for culture at that time the main idea behind the creation of world cities culture forum is that it is to share research and intelligence among the various city administrations apart from this the forum will also help to explore the role of culture in future prosperity of cities note that the world cities culture forum currently consists of 40 cities spanning across six continents see cities like new york london paris tokyo and dubai are part of world cities culture forum see recently bangalore has been added to this prestigious list of cities and note that bangalore is the only indian city to be included in the world cities culture forum now talking about the working of the forum see under this forum world cities culture summit is also conducted every year the summit is hosted on a rotating basis by member cities during the summit the city leaders can share ideas and knowledge about the role of culture in creating sustainable cities basically the world cities culture summit would be attended by deputy mayors for culture and heads of culture from the member cities the summit provides an opportunity for the leaders across the world to share their best practices in preserving the cultural elements of city a note an additional fact here the world cities culture forum releases world cities cultural report it is released once in every 3 years the report provides data and details on innovative projects from cities across the world okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about world cities culture forum then we saw about the working of world cities culture forum and finally we saw some points about world cities cultural report see so this topic is very much important for your prelims exam so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now take a look at this front page article yesterday the registration of births and deaths amendment bill 2023 was tabled in the lok sabha the main objective of this bill is to ensure that there is a single document to prove date and place of birth and this is all about the news article given here in our discussion today let us see few provisions of the bill the registration of births and deaths amendment bill 2023 seeks to amend the registration of births and deaths act 1969 note that the 1969 act was enacted to regulate the registration of births and deaths in india now let us see the important provisions of the amendment bill the first important provision is regarding the registrar general of india see the 1969 act provides for the appointment of registrar general of india the important function of the registrar general of india was to issue general directions for registration of births and deaths the amendment bill expands the role of registrar general of india further according to the amendment bill the registrar general of india will have to maintain a national database of registered births and deaths okay this is the first change then the second provision is regarding registration of birth and death the 1969 act specifies certain persons to report births and deaths to the registrar for example a medical officer in charge of a hospital where the baby is born or jailer when the birth takes place in a jail see they have to inform about births and deaths to the registrar the amendment bill adds a provision here according to the amendment bill in case of births the specified persons shall also provide the other number of the parents if available okay this is the second major change the third one is regarding connecting databases as we already saw the amendment bill mandates registrar general of india to maintain a national database 
and this national database may be available to other authorities who are preparing or maintaining other databases like population register, electoral rolls, ration card and so on. But note that the sharing of national database maintained by the Registrar General of India should be approved by the central government. Okay, this is the third change. Then the fourth change is regarding the use of birth certificates. See for people who born after the bill becomes into act, it is mandatory that they must use only the birth certificates to prove their date and place of birth. For example, currently we are using the 10th mark sheet as a proof for date of birth, right? So people who are born after the bill becomes an act, they must only use the birth certificate to prove their date and place of birth. Okay, this is the fourth major change. The next important provision is regarding death certificates. According to the amendment bill for deaths occurring in hospitals, the hospital must provide a certificate regarding the cause of death to the registrar. A copy of the certificate will be provided to the nearest relative. Now in case death occurs in any other place other than a hospital or medical institution, the medical practitioner who attended the person shall issue the certificate. And the certificate issued by the medical practitioner must be provided to the registrar. Here registrar are officials appointed by state governments for each local area jurisdiction to ensure the maintenance of birth and death databases. Okay. And the last important provision is regarding the appeal process. Before seeing that, let us see the organizational structure for maintaining birth and death in states. At the state level, we have chief registrar and at the district level, we have district registrar and at the local level, we have registrars. If any person is aggrieved by any action or order of the registrar, an appeal can be made to the district registrar. And if anyone is aggrieved by the action of district registrar, an appeal can be made to the state registrar. Here note that the appeal must be made within 30 days and the decision regarding the appeal must be provided within 90 days. Okay. So these are some important provisions of registration of births and deaths amendment bill 2023 and that's all regarding this discussion now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now take a look at this small article the news is that recently the union minister of state for personal informed the parliament that 29,213 cases were pending with the central information commission in 2021-22 and this is about the news in this context, we shall discuss some points about Central Information Commission. The Central Information Commission was established by the central government in 2005 under the provisions of Right to Information Act 2005. This Right to Information Act was enacted to ensure that the Indian citizens can exercise their rights of asking questions to the government and different public service providers in a practical way. Note that the Right to Information Act replaced the Freedom of Information Act 2002. Now coming back to Central Information Commission, the Central Information Commission is not a constitutional body. As it was established under the Right to Information Act 2005, it is a statutory body. Okay. Now talking about the composition of Central Information Commission, the Central Information Commission consists of a Chief Information Commissioner and 10 Information Commissioners. They are all appointed by the President on the recommendations of Selection Committee. The Selection Committee would consist of Prime Minister as a Chairperson, then Leader of Opposition in Lok Sabha and a Union Cabinet Minister nominated by the Prime Minister. Okay. Now talking about the tenure, all the members including Chairperson shall hold the office for a term as prescribed by the Central Government or until they attain the age of 65 years whichever is earlier. A note on important point here. The members and chairperson are not eligible for reappointment. Okay, this is all about the tenure and composition of Central Information Commission. Now moving on to see about the powers and functions of Central Information Commission. First of all, know that the jurisdiction of Central Information Commission extends to all central public authorities. The Central Information Commission has power to receive and inquire into a complaint from any person regarding information requested under Right to Information Act 2005. Apart from this, the Central Information Commission can order an inquiry into any matter if there are reasonable grounds. And note that the Central Information Commission has authority to inquire into a complaint in a suyo motor manner. That is, it can investigate any matter on its own. 
while inquiring the central information commission has the powers of a civil court see basically the central information commission handles two kinds of cases one is complaints and the other one is appeals and both of them are filed by rt applicants against public authorities okay this is all about the powers and functions of central information commission now coming to the issues see one of the major issues regarding central information commission is that the delays and backlogs of appeals as we seen in the news there were about 29213 cases pending with the central information commission in 2021-22 and this was reported by the central government and the recent data provided by the central information commission says that the pendency was reduced to about 19233 in 2022 okay this is all about the central information commission like the central information commission there is also a state information commission it is constituted by the respective state governments the state information commission consists of one state chief information commissioner and a maximum of 10 state information commissioners and note that they are all appointed by the governor based on the recommendations of appointment committee headed by the respective chief minister of the state okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the central information commission then about the tenure and appointment of central information commission then we saw about the functions and powers of central information commission and finally we saw some points about the state information commission now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss preliminary practice questions now look at the first question this question is regarding central information commission here three statements are given we have to find how many of the given statements are correct now look at the first statement the central information commission functions under the jurisdiction of ministry of personnel see this statement is correct the central information commission functions under the jurisdiction of ministry of personnel and public grievances now coming to the second statement the chief information commissioner can be removed by the order of the president on the grounds of proved misbehavior or incapacity if the inquiry by the supreme court finds him guilty see this statement is correct the chief information commissioner can be removed by the president after an inquiry by the supreme court and this is based on the grounds of proved misbehavior or incapacity okay so second statement is correct now coming to the third statement the leader of opposition in the lok sabha forms part of the selection committee that selects the member of the commission see this statement is correct the chief information commissioner and other information commissioners are appointed by the president based on the selection committee the selection committee consists of prime minister leader of opposition of lok sabha and the union cabinet minister nominated by a prime minister so third statement is also correct here all the given three statements are correct so the correct answer for the question is option c all three moving on let's take up the second question this question is regarding world cities culture forum here also three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct now look at the first statement it forms part of the unesco see this statement is incorrect because the world cities culture forum is not a part of unesco and it is an independent forum okay now coming to the second statement delhi and bengaluru are the only cities in india that are included in world cities culture forum list see this statement is incorrect because the bengaluru is the only and first city to be part of the world cities culture forum list so second statement is also incorrect now coming to the third statement the forum releases world cities culture report every year during world cities culture summit see this statement is also incorrect because the report is released once in 3 years and not every year so third statement is incorrect here all the three given statements are incorrect so the correct answer for the question is option d none moving on let's take up the final question this question is regarding births and deaths amendment bill 2023 here also three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement as per the bill the register general of india has to maintain a national database of birth and death see this statement is correct as we saw in the discussion the provisions in the amendment bill states that the register general of india has to maintain a national database of birth and death so first statement is correct now coming to the second statement it states that the national database can be shared with other bodies preparing database after the approval of the central government see this statement is correct the amendment bill states that the register general of india can share national database to other bodies preparing database like electoral rolls census etc 
based on the approval of central government. So second statement is correct. Now coming to the third statement, the bill mandates that every citizen must only use birth certificate as a proof of date and place of birth after the bill becomes an act. See this statement is incorrect. See it is mandatory only for the people born after the bill comes into effect to use only birth certificate as a proof of date and place of birth and not for everyone. So third statement is incorrect. Here only first and second statement are correct. So the correct answer for the question is option B only 2. This is the quiz question for you today. I will post this quiz question in a community section. Try to answer it and the answer for the quiz question will be posted in the comment section of the quiz question itself. You can verify the answers and displayed here are the main questions for your practice. Go through the questions, write your answers and post it in the comment section. With this we have come to the end of the discussion. We found our video to be useful. Do share, like and comment and do not forget to subscribe to Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.